you know this week's study, the title or focus is what? Peace. A spirit, a fruit of spirit is peace. That's what we're going to uh, talk about and uh, look at it. And if I asked you, do you believe in peace, what would you say? Yes. But if I ask you, do you think let there be peace on earth, it's possible. Is it possible? When we think back of our human history and think back of uh, um, weapons, um, technology improved to create um, powerful weapons to deter war, and yet war is going on in the world. And yet there are a lot of uh, conflicts in our lives, in between neighbors, in between spouses, in between children and parents. Do you think peace is what peace on earth is possible? Not until Christ comes back again. Then what do we need to do? Right? We're going to just sit and wait until Christ comes back to us. That is a good answer. And we think that it is not possible. But yet, our Bible reading this morning says it is possible. In fact, Christ has begun the work to bring peace on earth. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 says what? He is our peace. He is who? Our Christ Jesus. He already has made the two one, right? Destroyed what? Barriers. The dividing wall of hostility. It has begun. Let there, let there be peace on earth. But we can still see a lot of things going on in our world, in our lives. As uh, John G. said, not until Christ comes back, it will be completely done. That's why. That's where we come in. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, later part, it says, as what? Members of one body. The body of Christ, you are called what? To peace, to live in peace, be peacemakers. That is our call. Our Lord God has already begun the work, and until he comes back, we need to engage in the mission. Carry out the peace on earth. We are appointed, anointed, commissioned to do that. And as you saw, the, one of the uh, clips that the uh, homeless man was holding, the plaque, and he had that uh, uh, first, second Corinthians 5, 8. He says, God has called us to peace, to live in peace. So, in order for us to be great peacemakers, what should we need to do? Should we be doing? What needs to be done? You know, when we became great peacemakers, then we are going to be great lovers, right? We all want to be great lovers. So we want to pay attention what we need to do to be great peacemakers. Amen? So this morning, I would like to ask some questions and answer. I, I would like to give you some answers. And... And at each point, I want to ask you a question, and you will give me the answers, all right? 
So I've um, asked myself, what is peace that our Bible is talking about? And who can be the best fit for this call that to be peacemakers? And how do we carry out this mission on earth? So all those questions, I've come up with the three A's, the answers. Action, no brainer. Anyone, no brainer, right? And third answer is apply, okay? So we're gonna pay attention to all those three things this morning. So what is peace? The first question, what is peace? It's action. It's actively seeking to resolve conflicts in God's love. You know, love is key, right? Love is the key. And we know love is not a feeling, not an emotion. Love is what? An action. Therefore, peace is another form of love, another expression of love. Therefore, peace is an action actively seeking to resolve conflict in God's love, through God's love, by God's love. Amen? Someone said this, joy is love singing and peace is love resting. I don't disagree with that. I would like to add some more into what peace is all about. Peace is not only love resting, but also resting in love by choosing to rest in God's love. That is an action, right? A lot of people have a misconception about peacemaking, about peace, and they think it's a avoidance, avoiding the conflict, avoiding arguments, avoiding to raise issues. Is that peace? Some families go on a month, not screaming, yelling. They, they're screaming and yelling and fighting has stopped. And neighbors thought that they have a peace finally. But they give each other what? Cold shoulder. They only talk each other when absolutely needed, and they say yes and no. And they can go on like uh, for years. Is that family have a real peace? No. And some people think that keeping peace is running away. Husband and wife argue something, guess who's walking out the door? And they think they are doing, keeping the peace. Or appeasement. Some people think peace is an appeasement that the other person run over you. You be doormat and give in all the time. Yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear. Is it keeping peace? at home. Not really. It's all bothered up. Someday it's going to explore. Exploring. Huh? Yeah, explode. And we are only focused on what outward appearance, peace. Normally we think of, it doesn't last. One uh, zoo, zoo keeper, did I say right, had an idea and he was a successful keeping the lion and the lamb in a same cage. And people come from all over the world to look at the site. How do you keep the lion and lamb together living peacefully. So one traveler 
raised the question, and the zookeeper answered. Do you know what was his answer? Well, I supply fresh lamb every morning. Yeah? It appeared to be they live, coexist uh, peacefully, but in the end of the night, at the end of the day, the lamb's gonna be eaten up. So a lion all day be patient because he has this fresh lamb in front of him and he knows that it's going to be his dinner when doors closed. It doesn't last. It's not permanent. It's a temporary solution. That's how we live, how we do try to solve any conflicts a lot of times. But our Lord Jesus said what? My peace I give unto you. I live with you. So don't let your heart be troubled. What is the peace that he's talking about? His peace, no one can take away from us. His peace that if we have, that we are not going to be rattled by the circumstances of life. It's going to be permanent. What is that peace that he's giving to us? Through his uh, suffering, his death and resurrection, giving us what? Solid assurance of eternal life. And it is action that we take, right, to accept his salvation. When we accepted his salvation, when Jesus is assurance of Jesus is mine, is solid in us, then we can have peace in life, no matter whatever is going on in our lives. You know, the greatest conflict that we all are going to have a face one of these days is what? Hmm? Death and life. We all are going to encounter this conflict, death and life. When we have this solid assurance, blessed assurance that Jesus is mine, We will go up and down. We will go emotional journey. But deep inside our heart, we will be joyful, happy, because we have our eternal life, better life waiting for us. This life is very short compared to our eternity. And we know that great rewards waiting for us, then we can choose to rest in God's love. We can choose to be at peace. That's an action, actively seeking to resolve conflicts. Right now, Doris Mori is in conflict with life and death. She eliminated a pain in her back by inserting cement in her spine, but she was told that her cancer spread entire her body. There is nothing they can do. She has a bone cancer. She's 90 years old. And somebody said to her, I am so sorry. Did you know what she said? Don't be. Don't be. That tells us that she chose to rest in peace, rest in God's love. 
because she has this solid assurance, Jesus is mine. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know everybody in deathbed, everybody singing that song. Because he loves me. Because I know all the Bible promises that I've done throughout my faith journey, I know that is true. Therefore, I'm not going to be in despair. I choose to be at peace. Whatever drama you are going through in life, I know in the midst of us, we have uh, people going through great conflicts. And yet, they live a faithful life. Guess what? They made an action. They chose to be at peace. So peace is an action, actively seeking to resolve whatever conflicts you have in God's love. Peace is not only love resting, but also love resting in love. It's an, an action. Got it? And then second, who can be the best fit for this call? Anyone. Great answer. Anyone who's got peace like a river. Anyone who's got solid assurance that Jesus filled their hearts with this solid assurance, this peace the world cannot understand. How can you have a peace when you are going through cancer? How can you have a peace when you file for bankruptcy? How can you have a peace when you lost your loved ones? No can. But because you have this solid assurance, you choose to be at peace. So those who has that can have, can be fit for this call, be peacemakers, great peacemakers. Not only we have to have peace in ourselves, accepting salvation, accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but also we have to have a peace with Almighty God. Salvation has two parts. We're going to do this over and over. Justification and sanctification. When you do not work out your salvation, when you sin against God, how can you have a peace? The Holy Spirit convicts you over our sins, and we say, no, 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 I'm going my way. And the Holy Spirit tried to lead you. We'll have these conflicts. If we don't have peace with God, we are not fit for sharing any peace. If we don't have a peace in our heart, peace with God, there no can be. You know, have you seen the... Uh, um, Pictures of the 1960s and 70s, there was a peacemaking movement and let there be peace on earth. And, and, and they were so angry because uh, we are in a war and we don't have a peace. How can you? That's why they weren't very effective. They don't, themselves didn't have peace in their hearts, peace with God. A lot of people think they have a peace with God, and yet they have a ceasefire. You know, God, you do your own thing up there. I do my own thing down here. You don't interfere my life. I don't interfere your life. Don't tell me. I'm in charge of my life. I do my own way. God, I love you. I have a peace with God. Really. God says, how can we have a peace when you don't 
do what I ask you to do, when you don't live what I created for you to live, when you don't fulfill your purpose that I have given you, how can we have a peace? Right? The problem we all have is that if God screams at us, yells at us, we can hear his voice loud and clear, we will obey. We will fill our lives with obedience and follow his plan and his guidance and his purpose. But we seem to not hear him loud and clear. Now, I'm going to insert a little bit of my failure and you all have to promise me not to share to a, a soul. It's a confidential information that I'm going to share. And do you all agree that you're going to keep the secret for me? Oh, no way. No, I'm going to cut it. <laughs> so you all agree. Huh? So. Last Thursday, I was uh, uh, working at the booth, right? Orange chicken booth, and it was uh, hot and sweaty. I had a Paul Keller t-shirts on me, hot and sweaty. After finishing the uh, shift, it, it was uh, already 8 o'clock, and it was raining and cold and windy. When you sweat a lot and then you come out, step out to the windy, cold, rainy, you, uh, you know, I was coming over at the end of my cold, you know, so I was shivering. I was in a rush to get to my car, which I parked at the girls and boys uh, area. So I came out and on the walk, sidewalk, and there were so many people. So I said, never mind. I just want to jaywalk and you know, across the uh, street. Normally, it's possible, but I heard, hey, you, go get to the crosswalk. I was just stunned and embarrassed. I just pulled my, myself back into the sidewalk and I walked so fast. And then the lady, she didn't know I was right behind her. She was talking about the lady who got yelled at. Now, what if I keep on going, ignoring that guy's yelling instructions? He would uh, do in everything in his power to capture me, put me on a Maui news, right? I'm glad I didn't. I, you know, he just pulled me right back that his yelling was so loud. Oh, boy, so there were over 50 people walking on the sidewalk. So, so I know Maui people are going to talk about that lady, poor lady. And when they talk about it, don't you ever say, I know who that was. <laughs> you just say, oh, poor lady. OK? You know, it would be good if we hear God that loud and clear, right? But we do. <laughs> That's my point. We do. Where can we hear God's voice loud and clear? Huh? In the word of God. You see, in his presence, the word became flesh dwelt among us. So we've got to study the Word of God. We've got to meditate. We've got to think of what he said, what he would he do all the time. He is with us, didn't he? Doesn't he? He says so, right? And his presence is here with us. His Word is uh, speaking to us loud and clear. And without it, we are lost. This morning we sang that song, right? 
and I am desperate for you. Are we really desperate for him? Without him, we are lost. Therefore, this is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. This is my daily bread. Your holy word. That's when we are filled with his presence. We are filled with his word. Every day, every moment. Then we can have peace with God. We can have peace with ourselves. That's when we are best fit to carry out the peace on earth. Got it? So who is best fit for the call? Anyone who's got peace like a river, joy like a fountain, love like an ocean, who is meditating upon his word, upon his spirit. Got it? All right. Now, how do we carry this mission out to the world? Huh? What is the answer? How do we do it? Huh? I gave you. Apply. That's right. I gave you the answer. Apply what? Apply peace. Hey, no brainer, right? Apply peace. Peace, I give you. P. How do you spell peace? P E A C E. So I give you P E A C, what P E A C stands for. And I get lost, so you give me the next letter, all right? Next letter, all right? So that how we apply peace into our lives so that we can have a peace with others. So we have a peace with ourselves, peace with God. Now we have to peace with others. Amen? So apply peace. P, phone. Or peace conference. Call a peace conference. Those who you have conflicts with, those who is estranged to you, those who are angry at you, whoever has conflict with you, make a peace conference. Fall in love, with love, by God's love. Have a place, time to talk over the issues that you have. It is very important, I know, some of you have to do it today. Time's running out. And that's P. What is the next letter? E. e is empathetic. Be empathetic. Try to understand when you have a conference, peace conference, try to understand, be sensitive where that the other person is coming from. Sympathetic, empathy. You know, PK, my doggy, is usually good. She was really good girl, but lately she developed this habit of barking at me. And when she barks, my I'm startled, like I seen a gecko or something, you know? I scream. And the other day, Wednesday, I brought her here, and we were practicing music, and she, she couldn't, she, she's uh, you know, uh, about 80, 90% blind, and uh, one ear is deaf, and she couldn't see mama, but she could hear um, some noise, everybody's voice, but not mama's voice. So she barked, and I said, mama's here. 
And she barked again. I was almost get angry at her, and Carrie gently reminded me that she cannot see Pastor. And I said, okay. So I hold her on my right arm, I mean left arm. I play the keyboard with, be sympathetic. You understand what situation she was in. She was just frustrated and afraid and troubled. And Mama somehow left me here. When you raise your children, you have a war with your children about their toys, about their girlfriends, boyfriends, <laughs> about their choice of uh, this and that. Be sympathetic. Try to understand where they are coming from so that you can have peace. You can actively resolve conflicts in love. Amen? And that's E. And then another one is what? A. A. A is what? Attack the problem, not the person. Attack the problem, not the person. When you attack the person, you cannot solve the problem because they are already offended. They are already got angry before you even talk about the problem. So do not attack the person, but attack the problem. You see, when you don't have a solution, don't point out the problem. If you're not going to be part of the solution, don't point out the problem. Then you're going to be part of a problem. You want to be part of a solution, right? So do not attack the person. Encourage and build up. Do not criticize. Do not compare. Do not grumble. Do not, do not, do not. Got it? That's a... A, attack, not attack the person, attack the problem, not attack the person. You can eat the cake and have it too. Did I say it right? All right. Uh, kind of. And uh, what is the other letter? Oh. In a conference, peace conference, you go with Spirit of compromise. Compromise. You know, in order for us to compromise, it's going to cost us, right? Cost our pride, cost our right to be right, and cost many things. But that's love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is gentle, right? You exercise love in compromise. And like uh, if uh, husband and wife, you have uh, to uh, discipline your children and um, taking care of finances, you both wanted the same thing, very important. You both want to have control of it. And if you both say, I have an upper hand here, it's my prerogative then there won't be any peace at home, right? For peace, not yes, dear, yes, dear, not running away, not avoiding to talk about it, but compromise. So what is the most important that, that you really absolutely have it? So split it, compromise it. Whatever way it works, compromise. Got it? And then what? E, engage in reconciliation, not the resolution. Engage in reconciliation, not the resolution. Resolution is focused on the task, the goal. Reconciliation is a focus on the relationship, people. So when we are engaged in reconciliation, we gain people, then 
the resolution follows. Not 100% sometimes resolution follows. But when we focus on resolution, then we lose people. It cannot be reconciled when we are focused focus on resolution. And God gave us a great example, right? God could have wiped the entire humanity because we live in sin. But God sought to reconcile with us. And the Bible says, God himself reconciled to us through his son, Jesus Christ, and he has given us what? The mission, ministry of reconciliation. That's what our God wants to do. How did, it God, or how did God reconcile to us through Jesus Christ who died on the cross? Reconciliation cost big time. It cost his life on the cross. And God commands us, love one another as I have loved you. Lay down my life. Lay down one's life for one's friend, others, is the greatest love. So that means when you go call a peace conference, be empathetic and go with the compromise and attack the problem, not the person, and engage in reconciliation, that means you have to nail your pride on the cross. That means you have to nail your ego on the cross. That means you have to nail your right to be right on the cross. Think about it. It's a deal breaker. Do you want to leave a legacy that you are troublemaker or your peacemaker. Apply peace into your conflict, actively seeking to resolve the conflict in God's love and have a peace with God. That's how we can be great peacemakers. Amen? Husband and wife went to uh, travel to travel out to west. I don't know which mountain they went to, but one point they saw this uh, sign says Echo Point. So wife suggests her husband to say something so that they can hear it back. Husband says, ah, I don't think so. It's not going to work. And the wife said, try it, try it. So he was uh, reluctantly tried. And he said, Blani! And it didn't come back. So he says, you see, it didn't come back. And the wife says, maybe it was too short. So make a sentence. And he says, I am the best husband in the whole wide world. And then Echo came back, what? Bloody! <laughs> Are you all satisfied with your life, with your relationships, with your finances? Will there be peace on earth? Will you have a peace? Is it possible? The answer is yes, it is possible. In fact, our Lord has begun, and we are called, anointed, commissioned, and blessed to do it, to carry out. Our armed forces, our veterans, and our soldiers, fought a war to bring peace on earth. If peace is not possible, their death, their sacrifice is in vain. If peace is not possible, if we're not participating in peacemaking, 
our Lord, death and resurrection is in vain. His blood shed on the cross is in vain. Yes, it is possible, but we forgot to participate in making peace. How do you do it? What is peace? We've got to know in order for us to be great peacemakers. What is peace? Answer. It's an action. Hi. <laughs> Who can be best fit? Anyone. And how do we carry out that mission? Apply peace. That's when we can be great peacemakers, great lovers. That's when God's going to bless our socks off. You know, you think I am making it up, but Jesus says so. Do you know where Jesus said, if you become a peacemaker, I'm going to bless your socks off? Huh? No? Matthew 5, 9. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. And uh, Solomon on Mount, Jesus said what? Blessed are the peacemakers. You check? All right. So, huh? Yeah. So, bless. God's going to bless you when you work at peacemaking, to carry out the mission of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your faithful servants whose heart is ruled by you, ruled by your peace, because we have chosen to accept you, have a peace in our lives, have a peace with you, and we apply your peace into our daily lives. Our Lord God, thank you. Thank you for those who are struggling with life and death situation, who are in conflicts with relationships, with finances, all those. Lord God, I ask you to give them solid assurance of great eternal life, solid assurance of you are in charge of our lives. When we have you, we don't have to worry about a thing, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, we thank you for your promises, for your love. We choose to rest in your love. Let our heart be ruled by your peace, the peace you gave us. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.